All right. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for your joining us this morning with our brand new strategic alliance partner, McNeely Brockman PR for our 45th installment of our EO exchange series, how to stay in or out of the news. So let me introduce the team that will be presenting to us this morning and remember to put your questions in the chat. So Kelly Brockman is a Nashville native and communication strategist with more than 20 years experience driving city and statewide communications campaigns. She specializes in media relations, crisis communication, internal communications, and government and community relations. Outside of work, Kelly has served as a board member for Greenways for Nashville and is on the executive committee of the Public Relations Society of America's Counselors Academy. Lee Lindsay is a communication strategist with more than 16 years experience in leading local, regional, and national communications initiative, initiatives for clients from small businesses to Fortune 250s. She specializes in developing creative strategies that bridge public relations and digital strategy. Lee serves on the board of directors for, of Safe Haven Family Shelter and has also been a board member for organizations including Proverbs 1210 Animal Rescue, Bookham, and PRSA Nashville. Lydia Linker is a veteran broadcast journalist, press secretary, and consultant with a 360-degree understanding of the media equation. She specializes in media relations, crisis communications, and community relations. Lydia serves on the boards of the Rotary Club of Nashville, Senior Ride Nashville, and Civic Design Center. So Kelly, Lee, and Lydia, welcome to EO Nashville, and we are excited to hear what you have to say for us this morning. Already messed up. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yep. It's like a Verizon commercial. Um, thank you. Thank you all. Um, hopefully you weren't bored by those quick bios. We just wanted to say good morning and thank you all. We have felt so welcomed into SAP and um, y'all have been great. So thank you so much. We're just going to jump right in because we really want to um, have time for answers and questions at the end. And we do want to let you know that um, Along the way, please raise your hand or chat and, and Marla maybe help us watch for people because we do want it to we do want you guys to ask questions. Speaking of questions, I do want to start off. If you could think of one word, I, it's hard to think of one word, so maybe a phrase. When you think about the media, what do you think? Put it in chat. Um, it you know, this will be kind of funny because you know, some people are gonna say, you know, the devil or uh my friend or <laughs> <laughs> hot mess these are great see this is what's fun um and and so we kind of want to go over the good and bad um and and L Lydia and Lee if y'all want to read some of these off while I'm Marie and Blunt. fake news that's one that we get a lot um unreliable vital Samira that's true there are storytellers Okay, so we'll y'all can keep putting them in there. And Lee, if you just want to get started, we'll watch for these. Thank you for whoa, y'all just keep pushing them in here. Um <laughs> 10 minute well, interview for a two second clip. That's great. <laughs> well, and but I really loved um Sunny's visibility, which is that it's the truth. It's um also an important opportunity for lots of businesses, but as PR people, we hear these opinions about the media all the time. And there's a lot of truth in all the answers. Um, but today we're gonna spend a little bit of time, like Kelly mentioned, talking about the very best case scenarios, what the, what the media can do for your business, but also what to do when the worst happens. But I get to talk about the fun part and the good news related to sharing the media, sharing your story with the media. So, but first let's just take a minute and talk about what's happening with the media. Because the media itself has been a story for years now, right? We've heard so much about what's happening um, with print media in particular. And I mean, raise your hand if someone has recently told you that print media is dead. Yeah, exactly. So, and you know, the print media is changing. Here in Nashville, the Tennessean doesn't even print every day anymore. It only prints six days a week. Um, Chattanooga is another example of a major paper in our state that isn't printing regularly anymore. So, all that to say there's great things happening digitally. Um, there's also a lot of things happening on the local level that are really positive. We're seeing increasing numbers of local TV viewership, even though um, network affiliates are losing viewership. 
We also know there are fewer report fewer reporters at some of the larger outlets doing the work and carrying the lift. Um, in some ways, that does create opportunity for us to provide story leads and share information with them. So there is a lot of good. And let's talk about a little bit more good that's happening locally as well. So on the screen, there are just a handful of examples of new shows, new outlets that have a uh, that have you know, come here to our city just in the last few years. And all of them offer opportunities for your businesses um, to share good news, to share how you're making an impact locally and how you're serving your customers. On the national, regional, and trade level, you'll see more of the same, more niche publications, podcasts, and those are all opportunities for you all to consider as well when you want to tell your story. So we know that there are more players out there. We know there's opportunity. No, the media is not dying, but it does look different. How do you know if you have a story that's, you know, camera, camera ready, as my friend Lydia would say? Um, here are a few tenants that we use with our clients. Is it timely? Is it tied to a holiday or to occasion? Is it happening soon? That's something to consider. Um, is there a local aspect that is meaningful? So if you are launching um, a new presence in Memphis or in Atlanta, um, tying that to a Memphis and Atlanta outlet matters and making sure that you're reaching the right reporters with information. The size of the impact of your news matters. If you are um, leading an effort that is going to provide scholarships to folks um, at a large scale, that sort of impact is of interest. Prominence matters. Um, I like to call this one the celebrity factor. If you're lucky enough to have Taylor Swift coming to your business or giving your nonprofit a ton of money, congratulations, you're newsworthy. Um, but that can also mean having a prominent local aspect too. And not everybody can get Taylor Swift, but having well-known folks involved in your business is a plus. As much as conflict, as much as many of us, myself included, hate the idea of it, if something has an element of conflict, that creates attention. Um, that's often the kind of attention that Kelly's going to talk about in a little bit that you might not want, but it is what it is. That certainly makes something more newsworthy. Um, if you have a story related to your brand that tugs at the heartstrings, um, that will be of interest to media at many times. Is it unusual? Um, is there an element of relevance? And trends is another one of our favorites. If your business is doing something AI related, that's going to be of interest to media right now. If it falls with it in line with a recent trend, that's certainly something folks are most likely going to want to hear about. So you have realized that you have a story within your company that ties to one or more of these elements of newsworthiness. Now, what do you do? And we always recommend starting with research. And the first step is figuring out which outlet, um, media outlet, whether it's podcast or WPLN, um, the NPR affiliate here locally or TV makes the most sense. If it has a great visual component, TV could be perfect. If there's a sound component, maybe radio, um, but there are lots of different ways to look at that piece of who's the right outlet. Once you find your outlet, then you zero down a little bit more, find a reporter who you feel like might have an interest or a tie um, and target them with an email. We recommend starting with email always, but then don't be disappointed if they you don't get a response. Um, don't be afraid to follow up, be persistent. These folks are busy. It's not that they don't care. Um, so don't feel disappointed if you don't hear back. Um, this is also too where relationships matter. And sometimes working a firm with a firm can help here. Um, we have some tools internally we like to use that let us see when a reporter has opened our pitch. It helps us time our follow-up. Um, but th there's also aspects of this pitching of the pitching piece you can totally do and telling your story in your own voice is very meaningful to media as well.
Lee, I'm just going to jump in for a second. The photo we are looking at here was a recent one. One of our clients was on the new, new-ish WPLN show. It's over a year old now. This is Nashville. And what is significant about this show is it is a deep dive. It is a chance to really go beyond the 10-second soundbite. As one of the chat uh, entries said, you know, like a big interview for like two seconds on the air. So if you can get yourself into this show, it's amazing. It's not always easy. They have uh, agendas and and stories they want to do. But uh, again, something to really think about because you get to talk a little longer and go into a little more depth. All right. So I'm, I'll jump in now. Lee got to kind of do the fun stuff and I, I <laughs> kind of get to talk about the, you know, not all news is good news. One thing at MVPR, we we um, you know, media relations and and is is our strong suit. But we also have we we work in crisis, and that's kind of my background. I have a, a lot of uh, um, some important some unfortunate stories that I could tell y'all. But um, I guess that's why they pinned me to talk about the the more negative stuff, right? So being featured in the media can be a great thing, but that old saying that all publicity is good publicity is a total myth. Um, there are many situations that can lead to a business being caught in a crisis and possibly receiving bad new coverage. Lee, a second ago, one of her bulleted items was empathy. I think empathy comes in, or human interest, which is empathy to me, that also comes into a crisis, right? Showing empathy is always, you know, whether, whether, it's a good story, bad story. We're all empathetic in our in our real worlds, right? So empathy is that can go on both positive and negative news stories. Um, I did want to talk about a few examples of some possible negative news stories that companies receive. Um, I don't and raise your hand during while I'm talking if you've had to go through any of these. But an irate customer with a bad experience either calls the media or nowadays they just go on Twitter or X or or complain on their Instagram posts. And, and so that, you know, they tag media outlets there. A product recall, a customer data breach, uh, worksite accidents and injuries. I know we had one this week at a, at a high school. Um, senior leadership or employee wrongdoings, uh, active shooter incidents. No one wants to um, have to live through that, right? None of these scenario, scenarios any of us want to think about, but it's very important that we prepare for these internally with your teams. Um, and, and we always tell everybody, you really need a crisis communications checklist. You need a, a um, plan. And I'll go through the, the checklist now. And, and the, these can, you, we can add to this. This is just kind of the generic what to do. First of all, don't panic. We have people watching us as leaders, our teams, um, also the leaders with you, don't panic, try to be calm, always get the facts and assess the situation. Um, we kind of laugh about this because, you know, Lee or Lydia, our offices are right next to each other. Lee could run, run in my office and say, did you hear this? Did you hear this? Lydia could do the same. I don't know which one of them are telling the truth, right? You have to get the facts. You have to know what is going on. I trust them. So I'm going to believe that I'm getting the facts from them. But you really have to all get together Get the facts before you say anything internally or externally. During that time is when you pull kind of your crisis team together. That could be your communications person, your social media person, other leadership on your team. Get in a room, all get the same facts, get everything together. And this is when, even if you have not received a media call at this time or an external call, this is a good time to go ahead and draft a one to two minute media statement is what we call it, or one to two minute a sentence media statement. That could be something very simple, like this is early on and we're assessing the situation right now. It could be, this is an ongoing legal matter. We cannot comment at this time. Um, Lydia can get into the do's and don'ts of working with the media in a little while. Um, but tell your story accurately when you're doing this. Always have the facts. The facts are really important because you can get in a lot of trouble if you do not say exactly what has happened. Um, first, we all know this, tell your internal teams before you go externally. Your employees do not wanna read or see on the media what has happened. Um, they wanna hear from you as their leader. They're looking at you to lead them. And then you can go to your external audiences, which is media, um, 
you know, sometimes on internal audience, that's that can be board members and, and stakeholders that are close to your your company. Um, sometimes people want to wait two days to tell externally, so you have to keep your internal audience kind of in a vault. Um, but always that the main the main goal here and the point here is to, even though we do not think a crisis will happen, always be prepared for a crisis. Um, and and it could it can sit and it can have shelf life but at least you have a plan ready to go. And Kelly, I would add to that, designate someone in your organization or company to be the media spokesperson. Not everybody is meant to talk on camera. It's okay. Figure out the best person who knows the most, who does the best job of communicating, and by all means, do practice sessions. Uh, whether you're, you're anticipating media or not, uh, it's good to have those facts down, to listen to messaging and keywords. So make sure you have someone yes. who's ready to go. Yeah, thank you, Lydia. That's... that's um, that's true. And and it is good to practice uh, even even when, you know, we do we do mock mock media trainings all the time just to prepare people. And and we kind of do it internally, too. Um, but it's always when you when you get that crisis team together and you're all sitting in that room and you're crafting your statements and your messaging, you have to it, it's either it could be a CEO or it could be your comms person. But you have to know who the who. You know, if you have a team of 10 or a team of 100, if they're outside and channel two or channel four pulls up and they have a camera, then that person needs to know who to go to. So your internal team needs to know who your spokesperson is also. And oftentimes, if you do get in a crisis situation, um, media can even look at their own personal Rolodex and look for someone to call. And recently, I was working with a client on a crisis and a scene reporter realized that they knew our administrative the administrative assistant for the client and immediately called that person, which of course puts them in a terrible spot. So making sure everyone in your organization, even if they're not typically related to media relations or the leadership team, as much as possible, like knows what to do when they get a call from someone who's trying to get information is important. Does anyone, let me, let me just, does anyone have any questions? We can just do a quick pause if anyone has any questions about what we've kind of gone through so far. Okay. All right, Lydia. All right, Kelly, thank you. First of all, everyone, I want to tell you that I've been dreading this session all week and not because I didn't want to be with you all. I've had the worst sinus uh, infection of my life honestly, <laughs> and I had no voice at the beginning of the week. So this is the best I have sounded. I've got my sparkling water. I do not have my cough drop. So I realize I feel very far from them right now. So at some point you see me disappear, I'm gonna go grab them, but I'm gonna muscle through this. So there are ground rules to know when you are working with the media. It's not a one-way communication. And I think this is the biggest enlightening point for people when I work with, with them and work with our clients. Uh, you need to understand how reporters work, but you also need to understand what your part of it is as well. So the quick and dirty on reporters is they're on deadline. They're usually working on multiple stories. They have to post to social media like 15 times an hour and they have to get the job done. It's not the scenario it used to be. You heard what Lee said about the media. It is all different. I was a reporter. I look back on those times like this luxurious time to talk to people and write up my story and deliver it and anchor the news. That day is gone. It's, it's boiling down to how many clicks, how much money are we making? So it's a scenario that's really changed. But as the person who's going to be interviewed, the things you need to know are you have every right and responsibility to talk to the reporter about what they may ask. Uh, not every reporter is going to tell you what their questions are, but you have every right to ask them that. You also want to know the scope of what they want to cover. If you haven't done the initial outreach for the media and the media is coming to you, so this is them contacting you, you want to know as much as possible what's going on. Keep talking, building that relationship, knowing what's happening, and all along the way, provide reliable and accurate information. This is a relationship you might just be starting. Chances are you're going to work with this reporter again. You want to make it a positive experience. But do know that you can talk back in this situation. It's like any good interview, you're, you're interviewing a potential, you know, boss is interviewing you. Well, as the interviewee, you should also know that you can ask questions. Never think it's one-sided. Keep the conversation going. It'll make for a better interview and a better final story. And anticipate the questions, kind of playing off of what we just were talking about. 
Take the time, sit down with your team to write down the questions you feel you may be asked. Again, if you are initiating this contact with the media, it's a little bit, a little bit of a different scenario. As you can tell, it's a little hard to talk on sinus meds. But if this is somewhere where the media has come to you, you really need to game out. You don't want to have an awkward presence on camera or, or in any situation where you weren't just caught off guard. You never want to look like that. You always want to be on your guard. So anticipate the questions, but also use this time to get your key messaging down or key phrases. This is your one chance to really shine, to do the best to make you look good, your organization and your business to look good. So you need to do homework. Gone is the day, gone is the day where reporters are going to do all the legwork for you. I, I get a lot of this from clients sometimes that there's an assumption that reporters are going to do a great job on the story. I, I just got them to do it. No, your work has just begun. And in a perfect scenario, you're gonna be working with that reporter through the very end. Your job is never done through this process. Direct questions deserve direct answers. Common sense, absolutely. No matter what, tell the reporter what you can. Now there's gonna be times that you can answer the question and that's fine. You'll have to say something like, you know what? I'm not the right person to talk to. Let me get the right person in my organization or, I need to find out more about that. Let me get back to you on that. Or we haven't formulated a policy yet, so I need to tell you more you know, as we get it. But always, always make sure you tell this reporter that you are going to get what they're asking and always circle back with them. That's key. When I was a reporter, if I didn't hear back from someone, it's the most annoying thing. You're on a deadline. But also, if you're like doing an outreach with a reporter and you're getting the story done, you want to make sure that they are doing everything correctly and have everything in on the context that they need. So again, communication, direct questions, direct answers, following up, being timely, how you would treat your own clients. That's how you got to treat the media. It's in a relationship that will, will be lasting and hopefully a positive one. If you can't answer the question, don't say no comment. I'm going to reference the media here in a different way, meaning media, meaning television shows and movies. Always very dramatic, no comment. And look at that picture. This is a very typical uh, scenario here. This could have been taken in Congress this week when the new speaker was uh, anointed by his uh, representatives. Lots of reporters around, lots of different recording devices going down. When you say no comment, you are taking yourself out of the equation immediately and you are no longer part of the narrative. Again, playing off of what we just talked about, you always have something to say. Even if you don't have it at that moment, you can circle back. Other possibilities are, you know, if there's something under litigation and you can't talk, that's fine, but say so. This is a cop out. You never want to do it. You want to be a part of the story. So no comment is very dramatic, but it is not a good tool. And, and I'll throw in really quick because I said this a second ago. People have their phones out all the time and they're they're recording and everything you say. So even if if you're in a press conference or, you know, with all the cameras and everything in your face, there's also phones that people are pulling out in your face as well. And non-reporters. I mean, uh, we're always telling our clients, be very mindful that when you're in a public situation or a press situation, uh, someone with no reporting experience could be recording you and you could end up on social media saying something that you probably didn't want the whole world to hear. So we live in a world where there's a lot of access right now and not a lot of uh, skill in some regards. So you have to be very careful. Staying away from absolutes is always a good thing too. Uh-oh, I just said always. That's one of the absolutes you shouldn't use. Always, never. Our partner, one of the partners, Mark McNeely, really does not like the word unique, which saddens me because I think it's a good word. Uh, he always tells us the only thing unique in life are snowflakes. <laughs> so when you think of that scenario, okay, he makes a good point there. But, in, but more seriously, folks, if you're in a situation that's very fluid and ongoing and you may have repeated interaction with the reporter or the media, uh, you don't want to pigeon or uh, corner yourself uh, and say something when it, it could change. So no always, no nevers. And nothing about this session is unique either, although we'd say otherwise. <laughs> and we have another one for you here. Assume that everything you say is on the record. Again, another very dramatic technique that we see in movies and television and really good ones too. And let me just reference this by saying, this is not illegitimate. Reporters do this for a reason. Just the other night, my husband and I were watching the movie, oh, I think it was on Netflix, 
the movie, she said this was a story about how the two New York Time, Times reporters were getting uh, all the information they could about the, the women who were abused by Harvey Weinstein. They did this all the time. They had the type of story where they had to be getting making inroads and trying to find out things. So it is legitimate for a reporter to say on the record or not for attribution or just on background, but we we urge you never to do it as the person being interviewed. It could really blow up in your face. You need to be clear about everything you're saying. Everything's on the record. I can tell you as a press secretary to Governor Phil Bredesen in one instance, it's funny how you remember this till the end of time. I was talking to an Associated Press reporter I had a very good relationship with and a trust. And I told him something that was off the record because I wanted him to be able to see something that was coming down the line to give him context to the story he was working on. Well, lo and behold, that exact quote, and he perfectly quoted me, was in that story. It wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't, it didn't need to be out there yet though. And I had a little backtracking to do. And let me tell you, it's not easy to backtrack or fix errors. So keep it clean, keep it simple, do everything on the record. And this is an interesting one too, be friendly but not too friendly. Listen, when you get together with a reporter, there may be a little nervousness. You might have some small talk and some icebreakers. That is normal. That's going to happen. The reporter too is also going to be friendly as well. Reporters are nice people. I was a reporter. I was a nice person. I think I still am. But the bottom <laughs> line is <laughs> it can be used against you. Some reporters can be crafty enough to use this technique to lull you into a sense of comfort and intimacy that really doesn't exist. And all of a sudden you are just blabbing away and telling them all kinds of stuff that your communications person is having an apoplectic fit on the side of the room there because you're way off message right now. So be on guard, don't be stern. You, you know, you want to be pleasantly neutral and, and engage in the situation, but beware this is a technique that can be used to lull you into uh, divulging more than you need to or want to. So thank you, Lydia. Um, one thing that we wanted to, th there are so many videos that you can watch that show um, bad media interviews, and we can send those if you want afterwards, but we wanted to show a, a, a quick clip um, Everybody knows Talladega Nights and Ricky Bobby, but this is an, an example of what not to do in a media interview. Lee's going to pull it up. Oh, no sound, Lee. Stand by for technical difficulty. Let's try this one more have way. You, have you all seen this clip? So basically it cracks us up because we really like, you know, a lot of times when we meet with people and they have a media interview, we tell people don't wear like what I'm wearing right now. This is a pattern. You want to wear solid colors when you're, you know, standing talking to a reporter, don't look directly into the camera, look at the reporter, have your eyes like, you know, don't look directly in the camera, but um, Ricky Bobby, Lee, you can tell me when to shut up so you can try it again. Okay. You, okay. Go, go ahead. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. We're real happy with um, what was going on. And uh, at the end of the day, um, what did you say his name was again? His name is Ricky. Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby? He's got two first names. Whatever the hell his name is, let's get him over here. Everything ended up fine. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, okay, everything was fine. Thanks. Thanks. Great job, Ricky. Good job in the car. Ricky Bobby, a force to be reckoned with possibly in the near future. Ricky. <laughs> the hands. The hands. Um, so he, I mean, I've done it today. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Brian's got his hands up. I mean, we we all kind of talk with our hands, but he's, you know, he's, he's standing there and going like this, and then he holds the microphone, and his voice is uh, like muffled and loud. Um, so there, there are tons of fun videos like that, but the, the main point is you control your message. Um, you actually really do. People don't believe that with media, but if you, if you have the relationships, you have the honesty, you have your truths, you tell the truth, then that's how you can control that message.
And, and let me throw something else in there um, that people don't realize. Again, part of knowing the ground rules and this two-way communication, we are only human. We may have sinus infections and have a little, you know, difficulty talking, even when we talk for a living. When you're sitting down with a reporter, especially one who's recording you for radio or a podcast or like TV, know that you can start over if you goof up. You may slur your words. You may not nail the messaging on the first try. They're used to this. They're not, you know, you're not going to nail you like that. So just say, hey, you know what? I need to rephrase that. Also, you can do that after the fact. You know, you might think, you know, I gave them this, this, and that, and I didn't, oh, that's not really good. I need to go back. Please know that even after the reporter leaves your establishment or wherever you're doing the interview, you can interact with them and keep the conversation going. I used, to, as a press secretary, I used to tell our communications directors, you own the story until it goes to print or, you know, or is on air. Please know that you have that. You, it's really hard to fix mistakes. It's much easier to get things right on the front end. So feel free. You're a human being. They expect that. All right, so we will stop talking. We'd love some questions. I have a question. Hi, my name's Deanna Seymour. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious, I know, I guess in the industry, it was once referred to as desk side visits mm -hmm. uh, with publishers and producers or editors and such. Have those kind of gone by the wayside, you know, since COVID? Uh, are they still a thing? That, that people can do? I think, I think it's just different now, right? So we still, we still have, you know, they've been called desk sides, ed board meetings. Um, I think we can all agree David Plaza is in Tennessee and is fabulous. He'll, he'll still sit down and bring people to a table. Um, it could look differently as, you know, we go to lunch with a lot of reporters now um, and, and maybe not 10 people around a boardroom table like it used to be. But you, they don't shy away from those meetings that that I've been able to to tell. I think it's just people aren't requesting them as much, if that makes sense. Yeah, we with our clients, if we find some new, and not just any clients, we do this generally. We see new reporters coming to Nashville, young new reporters, and it's probably because of the reporter in me. Uh, it's, we go meet them. We have, go have coffee. We introduce ourselves and not just as, hey, we, we have this client who has a story you may be interested because of your beat, but hey, you're a new Nashvillian. Consider yourself, you know, you got a few more new friends here. And it's just great to make that outreach and start building that relationship. In the heyday of being a press secretary, we would take Governor Bredesen all around the state and sit in a, a print newsroom with like all their reporters. They were amazing sessions and the stories and the conversation that came out of that, that, that day has passed but there's a lot more one-on-one -on -one individual outreach. And, and I think it's important, like even if you don't have something to pitch or a story to tell, having lunch or a coffee with the reporters and like kind of starting a, you know, well, we never go off the record, but, you know, starting a relationship. So then when you do need to reach out to them and do need their help, then then they'll help you, right? So there's, there's kind of a two-way and it doesn't have to be when something's hitting, um, that, that you meet with them. I feel like it's usually better for a first meeting if something's even not hitting to Kelly's point too. And um, to also make the point of reading their work and understanding what they do and following them on social and you know, like their post on LinkedIn, um, react to, I'm still not used to saying X, but react to their content on X. Um, that all makes a difference and it's really meaningful. Um, let's see, Brittany has, a, Brittany has a good question. We, we get that question a lot, Brittany. Um, and Lee, do you want to jump in? Do you want me to jump in? Yeah, no, I'm happy. I'm happy to share my thoughts on it. But Kelly and Lydia, you jump in too. Mm -hmm. I think, Brittany, when someone comes to us and says, I want to start thinking about a PR campaign or PR project, I usually start with, okay, what are your business goals? What are your priorities for your company and who's the audience that matters the most? And then let's build a strategy to support that. <laughs> and maybe it's starting small with one or two initiatives, one or two initiatives, and then building on that over time. But, you know, you can't eat the apple in one bite. That's the same with PR. So I think it's always possible um, for a, someone with any size budget to take small steps that make impact over time. 
And, 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 you know, a lot of people, when you say PR, they're like, what is that? What does a PR person do? What do, what do y'all, are y'all just hiding the truth? I mean, we, we get so many, um, you know, misunderstandings, but it really is storytelling. And if you have a story, then that's what, we, that's our job is to help tell it. Um, and, and we work like with us on budgets and stuff, we work on from small to, you know, medium to large. I mean, it just depends on on the budget and, and, you know, a, a Lydia, I'll use channel five because Lydia's channel five, like, and she has relationships there. So a channel five clip can get you a lot of like, that's earned media than, than what you get out of paid media, if that makes sense. There's a couple more really good questions in chat too. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Lydia. No, I'm just gonna say, do we have some new, new questions in the chat? What do you, what do you think? about all publicity is good publicity. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's kind of what we were saying is it's, it, it, it is, but then if there's a crisis, it's not, if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm answering your question. <laughs> but you can, I, I, or you can find opportunity in these situations though too. Never, you know, if you can use the media to, in a good way, in a situation where there wasn't publicity you were expecting, you know, always try to find opportunity in, in the worst of situations. Well, and sometimes there's a story when you don't even realize there's a story. Like, you know, you could, we were meeting with a client the other day and they were talking about um, some line workers wearing pink hard hats for October for Breast Can Cancer Awareness Month. And it's like, that's, a, have you shared that with anyone? Have you put it on your social medias? That shows, that's a story that's huge. And and they hadn't thought, so it's just, Timely, yeah. interesting, fitting those boxes that Lee was talking about, yeah. Yeah, okay, there's another, Sunny. Yeah. Our relationships with local reporters, but what about national publications? Would it make sense to work with a PR company versus reaching out cold or consider pay to play? Um, a couple of different answers there to be sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's great that you have relationships with local reporters. National, I mean, it just, we we work with some national reporters. It depends on um, the market. I mean, th th there's trade publications, there's national, you know, there, there can, there can go, that can go a lot of different ways. And I think it's fine to reach out. Um, but again, that's where those relationships are really important in the not just reaching out when you need something, but always kind of keeping that ongoing relationship with, with your media friends. National media can be a hard nut to crack sometimes unless you have an in. Uh, so it does help to have those relationships. And pay to play, I mean, I think everybody has probably an opinion on that. Pay to play, I think is a good option. And I, I want Lee and, and Kelly to jump in here. When you do pay to play, you can absolutely get your message out there because <laughs> you're paying for it in whatever format you're using, but it's not always the route you should take. Why don't you guys elaborate on that? just say that well first off I love this question for a couple of different reasons but to start with the pay to play piece I think it's always worth doing everything you can to get coverage organically and being smart about if you're thinking about a pay to play option like why would pay to play make sense and one reason would be if something isn't particularly newsworthy but it moves the needle for your business for there to be information out about it um, does it help your SEO for there be to be information on um, a news outlet website about this product or aspect of what you're doing? Um, and But if there is a story that is part of a national trend that you can really target for a national outlet organically, it's going to be worth it um, for sure. It might take time, but it's worth it. And one thing I just wanted to mention too, and Sunny, you are so well-connected in Nashville, um, as Nashville grows, we're going to see more national media in our market. And our local media outlets, even like the Tennessean funnels straight up to USA Today, the Nashville Business Journal has a great relationship with American City Business Journals. We have an active AP office here. Um, if you have the right product, RFD TV is down the street and it's the cable network for rural America. Um, there's a New York Times reporters here locally um, now as well. You'll see freelancers for Essence and other big publications in town. So um, 
the national media is in Nashville and lots of you have relationships with them. We're glad to have relationships with them. And if you have the right story for national press, um, yeah, tell it, go for it. Worse, you're going to get to know. And sometimes in the way of like WPLN, they have really strengthened their connection to NPR. I mean, I'm a huge uh, NPR WPLN listener and a day doesn't go by that one of their reporters stories is now on either a morning report or weekend edition or after, you know, uh, the afternoon show they have, or it's, it's, you know, featured in one of these shows like, uh, I can't think of any of the names now, but those, those early afternoon news shows that are a little more in depth. So lots of channels now local are going to national and WPLN is certainly one of them. Samira, is it possible to start working with you guys for a crisis communication plan first and then increase over time? Of course, um, we do that a lot. Sometimes we, our first call is because it's a crisis and then we work through that and then we end up having them. That's one of our biggest clients. That's how we have them right now. Um, and we just continue to work after that. So yes. Um, and, and, you know, I always tell people never to be afraid of a crisis. Um, I think, I mean, people think it's weird that like, I don't want to say I love a crisis, but you know, people think that's weird, but uh, just always be ready, but we, we can definitely help with that. I think for, for all of us who've worked in crisis, and I know Samira has too, I mean, I think that we've also seen what it can mean for a business in terms of refining your message and learning how to respond and that there are silver linings, especially when you're prepared. So I, I do think, you know, maybe we are a little weird that we like helping businesses through crisis, but um, what we found is oftentimes you come out better on the other side of it. I really love, I really love your question, Jolene. Um, what do you do about those online haters? Um, <laughs> I would love to hear what Kelly and Lydia have to say, but what I always like to do is to be responsive on the platform and say, you know what, thank you so much for letting us know about this and then give them a mechanism to take the conversation offline um, and say, can you please DMS your number, or can we connect over direct message and set up a time to have a conversation with you? Because what we, what I want for my clients is if there is a negative review or a negative comment for um, the business to be seen as responsive, kind, and not in any way defensive, and for those conversations to happen offline. And um, that's just the best way to do it. I'm actually thinking back to a horror story of a restaurant that we had worked with in the past that had a GM that got on Google reviews and got really defensive. And um, yeah, just don't do it. Lee's a lot nicer than I am. Um, but but <laughs> but true. she's right. She's right. Take it, take it offline as, as much as you can. Everything that you say is screenshotted, even if you think it's private. So Whatever, whatever you put out there, it's an easy, even if you go, I mean, y'all see this when someone posts on, on X and then they realize the next day that they have too many glasses of wine and they take down that post. It's already been screenshot and shared everywhere. Um, especially if you're, you know, a, a, a well-known prominent person. So, um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and I'll keep, politics and everything out of this but what happened in Franklin with Phil Williams and Channel 5 recently it's if if she maybe if the interview the first interview would have gone a little bit differently he would have backed down a little bit but it, it just kept giving opportunities to keep on and keep on and keep on doing stories um so I'm sure y'all saw that but it was just it was that was the no comment and then that's when they just keep chasing you well, you're on the record again, you're on the record and there's this yeah. casualness and immediacy of social media that is just, you know, fabulous and a disaster depending on the situation. Right. And again, you know, it's, it lives in perpetuity. It will be there in, you know, infinitum. Uh, one of those, uh, did tell, Kelly made me just think of another, another uh, uh, story with Phil Williams and it was a former UT president, John Shoemaker, who ran away from Phil on camera, you guys. Oh my God, that's worse than no comment. Uh, that video was used so many times, I'm, I'm surprised it didn't break. Back then we were using tape. Uh, 
that is something that just lives forever and ever. And it just shows character and it's damaging to reputation and you can't take that away. So yes, maybe we should add that to the presentation. Do not run from reporters. Do not run down stairways. Uh, they, they will go into action. The adrenaline flows and the photographer and the reporter when this happens, they are getting the get and it will live on social and on the news show. It'll promote the series. So yeah, behavior matters. One you thing just that- kill this. Oh, I was just gonna, I'm sorry, Kelly. I was just going to say, you just kill those trolls with kindness and keep on going. Yep. Um, yeah, and that's what, so funny. What, that's, a, that's how we respond. And 80% of the time, those people just go away. They don't want to talk face-to-face. -face yep. Or on the phone. That is or true. not an in-person conversation. They just, yeah. They hide behind their screens. 100%. Um, uh, when I just thought of something that I wanted to mention earlier. This not about this, but... When you have employees and we were talking about the crisis plan and talking to media a lot, you know, and having a crisis plan is important, but also a media policy is important. Um, and, and you know, maybe maybe you don't mind if all of your employees talk to a reporter if they walk in the door. But but, it, you know, look at look at that and, and make sure that you have that policy in place because you don't want someone saying the wrong thing. Um, I've had that happen a couple of times where there was not a media policy in place and the employee didn't know. I mean, they legitimately did not know that they could not talk to a reporter because they were never told that. And then they just rambled and yeah. kind of like, like what I'm doing right now. And they just Hey, kept Kelly, will you yes. say like yes. what a media policy is? So they can, they can look different. Some media policies could be a media policy that says, um, these are your spokespeople. This is what to, what to do when you, you know, come across a reporter. Usually it's call your comms person or your CEO if you don't have a comms person. Um, it's got the crisis component to it. Um, it's basically, it could be a one pager or a 10 pager. And it's basically, depending on how large your shop is, um, it basically tells it, you know, we all give policies and procedures to our employees, right? When they first start. It's basically an extra page into that that says what to do when you come across a um, reporter. Okay. Some some employees just really genuinely just don't know that they weren't allowed. Um, and they might not say the right thing, but it they might say um, something that just doesn't sound right or and and that could that clip could get used with that story for years to come. So it, it just it depends on the situation. People, you know, we do this for a living. We know the pitfalls of it. We're not looking to seek celebrity to be on camera, but some people just want to be on camera. They want to be in print. They want to be a celebrity for five minutes. And that could risk a lot for you and your company if that happens. So. Right. So I've got a question years ago, I think it was in, in the wake of 9-11. I got a call out of the blue from a national business journal reporter I uh, want to talk about the impact on travel business. And I'm thinking, okay, this is, you know, all publicity is good publicity. And so we had a nice long conversation and I, and I, I talked about how it'd been really bad at first, but you know, things were much better. I gave him some stats about how bad it was at first and how much better it was now. And uh, then, you know, he, he writes his piece and all the bad, none of the good. And it makes it look like we're, you know, on the brink of going out of business. How do you coach up your clients to your media, not media savvy clients to, to avoid stepping in like that? Who? Kelly, do you want to start? I mean, I think that uh, it it just goes back to I, when, when David was talking, I was thinking about, you know, all the times that someone, a reporter has a, a you know, something wrong in a story and we call them and we say, whoa, this headline is completely off base. We And also, you know, the reporters aren't writing the headlines usually. Usually that's editorial shop writing the headline and it could be completely wrong. So we've, we've definitely called people, David, afterwards and said, hey, this is wrong. This is, uh, can you fix this? Can you get, and usually they do, but um, it, it still goes back to those relationships and, um, and, and, you know, that's been, you, you, you're still, you probably still remember that reporter's name. I mean, it, that's going to stick with you for forever. But um, those are, those are a little bit trickier because you do have to, even if they don't do a story, it's always good to have a follow-up and, and make sure they have the correct information. David, Should I have I asked? Thought, let me just say this, David, before you go on and let me interrupt you. 
my first thought was this reporter may have come in with the agenda to do the negative story. So I work with reporters, colleagues, you know, not the, the most professional who had a story in mind and that by God, they're coming back with it. So you, you cannot control that, but that can happen. That can happen. And negative is always, you know, I hate to use the word sexier, but a negative story can be promoted and get people to watch the news or buy the newspaper, or, you know, or post or whatever. So that's, yeah. that's unavoidable sometimes. Especially during sweeps. Yes. Yeah. That's just like the trickiest. That That's sort of the worst case scenario when you have a reporter come to you and you don't have a relationship with them. And it seems like on the surface, that would have seemed like a great opportunity. And that's where having someone who can support you and help you know what questions to ask to try to uncover that agenda is helpful. But I mean, that's just a tricky spot to be in. And I hate that happened. So, so when is, should yeah. I have, Sorry, go ahead. Should go I ahead. have said, you know, Hey, I'd love to talk to you, but if I'm going to do this, I want to have an opportunity to see what you're going to write before you print it. Oh, you bring up a good point. Reporters do not have any obligation to show you what they're writing. Uh, we have had it both ways. And, uh, as a reporter, I never would show people something. That just that's cool. what journalists do. They tell a story based on facts. Uh, we've worked on pieces where the reporter wanted us to see it because it wasn't a hard news story. It was a feature, and it was important for them to make sure we, they had it right by us. But yeah, do not expect it. You can ask. Do not expect. Okay. Good yeah. to know. Good to know. Well, it's time to do our breakouts, and uh, we've got two questions. Everybody, every group, remember to sign up a moderator. And the two questions are. Uh, what situations have come to mind that you should prepare for? And two, uh, what would your story be that you would get in the news or that you would want to keep out of the news? So uh, this has been awesome and uh, very, very informative. And uh, we had the breakouts and we really appreciate it. And we'll see you guys after the breakouts. Thank you. Everybody see the invitation for the breakout? So we were, Lee and I were in the same room. By oh, ourselves. no. Okay. Hold on one sec. So sorry. We, have to, we talk to each other all the time. So yes, I am so sorry. Okay. Now I got to find y'all. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna, let's see it. I don't want to put you with Lydia. So I'm going to put somebody in room three and somebody in room five.
All right. I know Lydia was our moderator. Lydia, do you want to start off, report our, our group? You made it. You're muted, Lydia. I didn't do that. I sort of did it on its own. Um, we had some good conversation about uh, people's interactions already with the media. Um, one of their, our gentlemen, Robert, has already been on several times. Robert Young is with a security firm. Uh, if I'm correct, Robert, you're also providing security for Covenant now. So he's been on the news a lot. And then we had another gentleman. Let me see him on the... Where are you? Raise your hand, Richard. Richard, who had a negative experience with the media and had to circle back with a, with an editor. But we were also explaining how when you do those circle backs, there's also opportunity to expand on your messaging. So that's our that's our headline. I'll I'll jump in. Um, sorry, uh, we cut you. Should, <laughs> tell, were you telling a Green Hills girl story about? Um, your servers and customers coming in. And so we kind of got cut off during that a little yeah. bit. Um, our struggle sometimes is inside the restaurant because the staff knows the guests for so many years and so long, they will absolutely overshare. We have people talking about how much money they make and how much money someone else makes and, you know, just, and not just with the, that kind of thing, but we've had to say, Instead of don't talk to the press, we had to draw some lines on what we share with our guests when they're in, when they're in there. Um, so it's a different kind of PR, I guess. And and Brian, we 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 talked a little bit about relevance and and um, maybe uh, you might think your company doesn't necessarily do very sexy things, but there are still trades in other places you can hit for those those stories. And and we talked about crisis a little bit, and and your team being uh, well equipped on well equipped on who uh, who to send reporters to. Well, this has been awesome. We've gone a little bit over because there was so much interest in this topic, and you guys did such a great job, and we're giving us so much information. So, so uh, we really appreciate it, uh, Kelly, Lee, and Lydia, um, and everybody. Remember that they can come talk to your forums uh, and uh, help us not step in it. And uh, this has been awesome and we really appreciate it. And thanks everyone. And uh, we'll see you for the next EO Exchange. Thank, Thank you, you everybody. All. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Bye.